Uh, this is a sample problem on multi-stage leaching using a series of thickeners. Uh, in here, caustic soda is manufactured by the lime soda process. I think everybody is familiar, familiar with the lime soda process. In here, a solution of sodium carbonate in water containing 0.25 kilograms per second of sodium carbonate is to be treated with a theoretical requirement of lime, meaning it's, it has to be based on a chemical reaction, on an equation. And after the reaction is complete, the sludge containing the calcium carbonate, containing only one part of calcium carbonate and nine parts of water by mass, is fed continuously to three thickeners in series and washed counter currently as shown in the figure. So the sludge that contains one part calcium carbonate per 100 parts of water in here, that is uh, uh, withdrawn at the bottom part of this initial equipment where your uh, concentrated wash water is mixed with the solution of uh, sodium carbonate and water with lime so that it will produce the uh, necessary caustic soda. Um, where was I? So you need to calculate the necessary rate of feed of neutral water. So we need to determine the neutral uh, wash water. So meaning not containing anything except water to the thickeners so that the calcium carbonate and drying, the calcium carbonate here, the last thickener uh, in the underflow three will only contain 1% sodium hydroxide after drying. This is already after drying. The solid discharge from each thickener contains one part by mass of calcium carbonate to three parts of water. So the concentrated wash liquid is mixed with the contents of the agitator. So the concentrated wash water, that's the wash liquid that is being mentioned here, already uh, concentrated in the sense that it has already with its sodium hydroxide is mixed here with the reacted uh, sodium carbonate and water with lime in here. So the concentrated wash liquid is mixed with the contents of the agitator before being fed to the first thickener. So this is the first thickener, this is the second, and this is the third. These are referred to as the thickeners, and this is thickener one, two, and three based on where the solid is being introduced. So since the solid from in here, from the agitator, is introduced into this first equipment, and so then this must be our first thickener. Because we number our thickeners in a multi-stage thickening process based on where the solid is being introduced. So this is thickener one, thickener two, and thickener three. Let me just, uh, what is this annotation here? Wait, class. <clears throat> okay. Now, this is our problem. And I have already taken the screenshot of this a while ago so that we can go on. Uh, with the solution. This would be one mano mano solution in our language, meaning we're going to do material balance per thickener. So we will have overall material balance and then we will have uh, individual material balances on each of our thickeners. So there's a need for us to have our uh, illustration, starting with our illustration for our solution. So let me get the I have it here now. So we'll go to our board. So this is number three already. So we will have the three thickeners here. <clears throat> so we will have the feed. 
coming from the agitator or the reaction vessel. So this is our feed. This is our, we label this as underflow one. This is our underflow two. And this is our underflow three. Now on the third thickener, we will have the wash water. So I'd like to label the wash water as S, representing the solvent. And from the third thickener, we will have overflow three coming from third thickener. Then we will have overflow two coming from the second thickener. And we will have overflow one. Okay, so far that's our given information. Now, from in here, this feed, so if you want to have, this came from the agitator. So this is where we will have the agitator. So this is from, and this is where, so I will have the line and the, I will just place N, okay? The end that I'll be placing here is the sodium carbonate, okay? Your line, the line is the calcium hydroxide. Now, so we will have these two reacted here and together with the concentrated solvent carrying with it the sodium hydroxide taken from the slurry from the sludge will be mixed together here and the resulting slurry will be our feed to the first thickener. So that would be our process in here. Now for our chemical reaction, so from CPI you know that when sodium carbonate reacts with lime, produces your caustic soda and you will have the sludge here. In this case, this is the solid calcium carbonate that is being mentioned in the problem. So this is our sludge. This is the sludge. This is the caustic soda. This is your line. So this is our chemical reaction. And it was mentioned that our problem reacted sodium carbonate, which has 0.25 kilograms per second sodium carbonate being introduced into this uh, into this agitator tank here okay um, it was also mentioned in the problem that our sludge this sludge here the calcium carbonate contains by mass so actually even if it's not mentioned that it's mass when you speak of part parts it means it refers to mass so one part calcium carbonate and nine parts water. So the sludge that will be carried over here will have this particular composition, nine parts calcium carbonate and uh, nine parts water, okay? Um, what else? It was also mentioned in the problem that um, your underflow, this U1, this U2, and this U3. So I'll place it here. Uh, 
uh, has this composition. So one part, again, so it's by mass, calcium carbonate, and three parts. Water. Okay. Now, in the illustration, if you recall in the problem that was presented to you in the figure, there is this x sub 1 prime, x sub 2 prime, and x sub 3 prime written inside each of the thickeners. Now, what does this particular x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3 prime represent? So I'll write it here. Your x sub 1 prime, your x sub 2 prime, and your x sub 3 prime represent the solute. And that is our A. So naturally, that's our sodium hydroxide, the caustic soda divided by the solvent. So if you recall our discussion on leaching, whenever we express concentrations, so whenever we express concentration, it does not take into account the amount of the insoluble solid. So it will only take into account the solute and the solvent. So in this case, we have here only, uh, since this is a problem from Colson, the X1 prime, the X2 prime, and the X3 prime represents pure mass ratio between the solute and the solvent, not the solute over the, sol the solute and the solvent, but only the solute and the solvent. Okay, so this is it. Then what else was mentioned here? Let me check. So I will read the problem and re you recheck what we have written here. Uh, what was written here on the given. Caustic soda is manufactured by the lime soda process. A solution of sodium carbonate in water containing 0.25 kilograms per second sodium carbonate is treated with the theoretical requirement of lime. And after the reaction is complete, the calcium carbonate sludge containing one part of calcium carbonate per nine parts of water by mass is fed continuously to three thickeners in series and washed continuously as shown. Calculate the necessary rate of feed neutral water to the thickener so that the calcium carbonate on drying, so this one I miss, contains only 1% sodium hydroxide. So this one, this U3 will undergo drying And after drying, the result would be a solid which is one, which is only 1% sodium hydroxide by weight. So this will only contain 1% sodium hydroxide. It's understood that since this is drying, all the water is already dried up so what remains there is sodium hydroxide and the calcium carbonate so it it has only one percent of sodium hydroxide okay the solid discharge from each thickener contains one part by mass calcium carbonate to three parts water so this one was accounted already the solid discharge from each thickener refers to the underflow so the underflow contains the slurry of the solid and the solution that is also present in the overflow. So it has one part calcium carbonate and three parts water. The concentrated wash liquid is mixed with the, so this is the concentrated mash, uh, wash liquid is mixed with the uh, contents of the agitator, this one, the reactor itself before being fed to the first thickener. So this is your feed now which is already a mixture of your uh, solid and the solution that is retained by your solid. Then it's being fed here into the thickeners. Now, before we forget, we have written here the uh, reaction between sodium carbonate 
your lime uh, forming sodium hydroxide and calcium carbonate. So there's a need for us to balance this. Uh, you have calcium 1, calcium 1, carbonate 1 as a group, carbonate 1, sodium 2, sodium 1 here, so I'll place 2. And hydroxide group is 2, so that would be 2. So this is your balanced chemical reaction for the lime soda process. So I think this is the everything that we need to consider in solving the problem. So the required, the place the required information here would be the amount of the neutral wash, what the wash water that will be used or the solvent, the pure solvent that will be used. Okay, so we'll have another sheet to continue our solution. <clears throat> In terms of molecular weights class, you need the molecular weights. So for calcium carbonate, that's 100. And for sodium hydroxide, that would be 40. And for sodium carbonate, that would be 106. So if I will write the stoichiometric equation in this case again here, so I will have a basis. So you have sodium carbonate, not for now considering the actual amount that is present, which is 0.25 kilograms per second. And I will have this reacted with calcium hydroxide to form your caustic soda. And you have your calcium carbonate. If I will write the molecular weights here, so this is 1 is to 1 is to 1, and this is 2. So in the case of sodium carbonate, I have here 106 kilograms, if I have 106 of this. And in the case of the caustic soda, since I'll be requiring two moles of that, so you're 40 times 2, so that would be 80. And your calcium carbonate would be 100. This one, so your calcium carbonate is 100. Okay, so far I need to have the molecular weights of this considering the stoichiometry because when I balance later on, I will only need this three to balance with because anyway, the problem mentioned that your uh, line is as required. So as theoretically required, so you have the amount of lime. So we did not use it as a basis, meaning we have sufficient amount of lime to react with our sodium carbonate to produce our caustic soda. And of course, the byproduct, which is our calcium carbonate. So the first thing that we do is we make an overall material balance, but our overall material balance will be in a form of a table in the same thing with the material balances in all our thickeners. That is thickener one, two, and three. So for our overall material balance, I'd like to have it presented like I have here. So you have here the calcium carbonate. I have here the sodium hydroxide. And I have here the water. I will balance this three and I'll be using mass balance because this is leaching and we're going to consider the masses. I will consider the ones that I have written here on the stoichiometric equation that we have. So if we have the overall material balance for the feed, which is the F, our feed contains 100 kilograms of calcium carbonate. The feed that I'm referring to is the feed from here, this one. So this has 100 uh, kilograms of calcium carbonate, okay? Why? Because I base it here on the formula. And then uh, the NaOH for that, the needed NaOH for that, or the rather not the needed, but the produced NaOH for that, which is also its content is 80. So your reaction here produces this calcium carbonate and together with this product of calcium carbonate, we have the main product, which is our caustic soda. So this is the ET here. And then, I'll place here the, 
And for the water, it says that our product in the given, it says that our product of calcium carbonate is composed of one part calcium carbonate and 900 parts water. So if I'm using this theoretical amount based on my stoichiometric equation, if I have 100 of this, it has already one, 900 kilograms of water based on the given, based on this given that I have 100 parts calcium carbonate would be translated to having with it 900 parts water also or 900 kilograms water. So I will place here the 900 kilograms. Now feel free to interrupt me if it's not clear to you. So this one was based on the stoichiometric equation. This one was based on what is provided in the problem, the ratio of these two uh, as being uh, produced out of the process, uh, out of this particular lime soda process. And this one is the amount of sodium hydroxide or caustic soda that goes with this calcium carbonate. So this is the feed that, be, that is being introduced into our first thickener. Now, for the wash water, We represented that as S. Our wash water is pure water, so it does not have any calcium carbonate. It does not have any sodium hydroxide. So it's just our wash water, which is S, which is our main goal. We do not know our wash water. Then we have, so this, since this is overall material balance, we will have underflow. Now, the underflow that we will be referring to based on our illustration is this underflow because if we do overall material balance, that would be, this would be the box that we're going to look into cut through. So your underflow will be specifically in this case, U3. Now, your underflow has, as mentioned, it will have 100 kilograms of calcium carbonate. This 100 kilograms, why it means 100 kilograms? Because we learned from leaching that your uh, insoluble solid will remain the same. So it does not get, uh, it does not decrease, it does not increase, so it remains as is. Okay, so that is why it's still 100 because that's the same calcium carbonate that entered our series of thickeners. So we still have 100. Now, for the NaOH present in the underflow, if you recall, we have, I'd like to go back to the illustration. We have this X3 representing the solute to solvent ratio. The solute present in this particular thickener to the solvent uh, in which it is dissolved to. Okay, so now we will use this particular X3 together with a multiplier to represent the NaOH present in the underflow. So if I will place here X3, or that would be specifically X3 prime, what should be the solvent? Because this one is NaOH over solvent, so we still don't have the solvent. So we have to think of what will be the multiplier solvent here. But our solvent is water. Remember, the solvent that is being used is water. So in that case, you have to use the given again in the underflow ratio that your underflow is one part calcium carbonate and 300 parts water. This tells you that this is the amount of water present in the underflow that goes with the solid calcium carbonate. So I will use this 300 parts water for every one part three parts water for every one part of calcium carbonate. So I have 100 here. So then my water must be 300. And this same 300 that I represented here as water will be the multiplier for my X3 here. That way, this product will represent the NaOH present in underflow 3. So we have now accounted for the calcium carbonate, the water, and the sodium hydroxide in our underflow three. So what we lack is the overflow now. So specifically the overflow one, because if we do our overall material balance, 
this is our last stream to account for, the overflow one. So our overflow will never contain our insoluble solid. And of course, it will contain the NaOH. But nonetheless, we'll keep it for now. We'll go to the water. Now, how do we account for the water that we will place here in the overflow? We are to make use of the one that we have in here. So I'd like to use a different form. So if the feed is entering our system, so 900, and we have the wash water, that should be equated to the, so the feed plus the wash water should be equated to the underflow, which is 300 plus the overflow one. So the overflow one here will be 900 plus S minus 300. That would be the value that you're going to place here. So that would be 600 plus S. Now we took the overflow content or the water content of the overflow from the balance of this three in here. In the same way, we do the same with <clears throat> this one with the NaOH. So the NaOH of the feed plus the NaOH of the wash water, which is zero, is equal to the NaOH of the underflow, the 300 X3 prime plus the NaOH of the overflow, O1. So whatever is the resulting expression here, that would be the thing that we're going to place for NaOH here. So in this case, your NaOH would be 80 minus 300 X3 prime. Okay? Do you follow this? Do you follow the balancing that we did here for the overall material balance? Hello, Miss. Yes. Good afternoon. Miss, 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 so that I won't have any problem with these amounts here. So the 100, the 100 calcium carbonate is based on this theoretical uh, stoichiometric equation. It's not based on the one that is provided in the problem wherein you are to process 0.25 kilograms of sodium carbonate. Take 0.25 kilograms per second. Of course, your calcium carbonate will not be like that. So it will be a ratio and proportion thing later on. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Okay, so but uh, if you intend to use right away, Josh, the 0.25 kilograms per second and stoichiometry uh, and using stoichiometry determine the actual value of calcium carbonate and use that in all of this computation here, that would be okay. But the thing is, you will be, you will be keep, you will keep on converting using this particular stoichiometric equation rather than having these values used, and then in the last part only convert using ratio and proportion, okay? Now, this is for the overall material balance. We will now have, we will now go to our thickener one. I'd like to label that as T1. And we will still have here the, excuse me, the calcium carbonate. We have here the sodium hydroxide and we have here the water and they are still in kilograms. And in here, so for our thickener one, now if you're going to look into our illustration, what goes into a thickener one is the feed and the overflow two. What goes out is the overflow one and the U1. So we will work on this, okay?
Okay, so for thickener one, we will have the feed. So I will not anymore define the feed. We will have the overflow three. I don't know, overflow two. The one that is entering is overflow two. Excuse us, huh? Make sure you let them out. Okay. So this should be the annotation will not come out. Where is it? Annotate. Okay, this is O2. And we have underflow one from thickener one and we have overflow one okay so for the feed the same thing as what we have in the original so we need to copy everything there so for the feed you have 100 here you have 80 for this one and we have 900 in here now for the overflow, we don't have any insoluble solid. Now this one for the sodium hydroxide, we leave it for now. I will just go straight to the overflow, which is an S, it's still an S. Now you may wonder why, why is it that your overflow two is still an S? I'll go to our illustration. Now, if you're going to do, if you're going to cut here, The water that entered here in your solvent would be the same water that is carried in overflow two that is entering your thickener one. If you're going to cut through here. So that is why the S here that represented the amount of water that entered the entire system would be the same water that will be carried here in your overflow two. Okay, so I will now go back here. And you're, you have here an S. So that explains the S in here. Using the same principle that we have for the S here, what about the O2 in thickener 2? What do you think would be the uh, NaOH present in the overflow 2? Using this cup here, what do you think? The amount of NaOH that is present in O2, what do you think would be that amount in relation to the NaOH that is present here and in here? Because I'm cutting through this area. I'm now accounting for the NaOH that should be present in the overflow 2, or that's the O2. That would be the what? So in simple material balance, that would be the NaOH in here minus the NaOH in here would be the NaOH that is carried here in your overflow too. If I'm doing a material balance on this block because I need the NaOH in this part. So there's somebody chatting. Correct. So that would be, Joburn, the 300 the 300 X sub 1 prime coming from here, which is your U1 NaOH. So that's the NaOH content of your uh, thickener 1 minus the NaOH content of your thickener 3. So that is your 300 uh, X sub 3 prime. So the NaOH of this minus the NaOH of this would be the NaOH that goes with your overflow too. So that's what we're going to write in here. So that would be 300, I will not erase it because it's so hard to, 300 X sub one prime 
minus 300x sub 3 prime. So that would be our NaOH present. Okay. Now, that would be for our NaOH in overflow 2. Now, we go to our underflow. So, our underflow will still contain, let me make this more, will still contain 100 kilograms calcium carbonate and it will contain mu1. So, what is the NaOH of underflow 1? Naturally, that would be 300 times X sub 1. And then you have the 300 here. A while ago, in the overall material balance, I've explained where this 300 is coming from. That's based on the ratio of the parts of calcium carbonate present in the underflow to parts of water. So one is to three. That is why we have this multiplier of 300 here. Okay, and that's the same multiplier that we have for the X sub 1 prime and the X sub 3 prime in accounting for the NaOH present in the overflow uh, coming from thickener number 2. Okay, now we go to overflow of thickener 1. So, of course, it does not contain our calcium carbonate. And in here, this one, just like what we used to the principle that we used a while ago in the overall material balance, you will do the maths here for this. Okay, so your, uh, this may not be enough. So 80, so the feed, uh, what else comes in? Plus the 300 times X sub one prime minus X sub three prime is equal to the underflow, which is 300 x sub 1 prime plus the underflow u1 so your u1 will be the difference the sum and the difference of this so what is left is if i will cancel this one and this what is left here is 80 the 80 minus the 300 x sub 3 prime okay the 80 minus 300 x prime okay your overflow will contain the same principle as what we use in the over uh, overall material balance so your feed which is 900 you add to that the wash water should be equal to the 300 of the underflow plus the overflow coming from thickener one. So your overflow coming from thickener one would be 600 plus S. Okay? So we need to complete all these things and we also completed this one and we also had this one. We do the same for thickener number two. Okay, so thickener number two, where are you? So for thickener number two, you have your feed is the underflow. Here we go. Your feed will be the underflow from thickener one. So this is your feed and your solvent will be the overflow from thickener three. And then you will have, of course, its underflow. The thickener 2 has its underflow and its overflow. You do the same as what you have done here. So we still have, for the underflow here, we have 100. And for the NaOH, we have 300 X sub 1 prime. And for the water, this is still 300 because of 1 is to 3. As for the overflow, we don't have calcium carbonate, but in here we have, so overflow three, I'd like to go to our illustration. This is overflow three. The overflow three uh, content of NaOH will be the NaOH of underflow two minus the NaOH of underflow three. That would be the NaOH present in overflow three. So this, 
minus this is equal to the NaOH present in overflow three. So that's a two and a three. So I will have here 300, I will just have it in parentheses, x sub two prime minus x sub three prime. Okay, that's the NaOH. Of course, in our thickener two, if you look at this one, if you cut here, you still have the S, the water present in the S uh, to be accounted for. So this is still S. Okay, for underflow, of course, you still have 100 here. And your NaOH, of course, would be 300 X sub 2 prime. And in here, this would still be 300 because of this ratio. And then your overflow will not contain any calcium carbonate. And this one, okay, just like what we have done here, you do the maths for this P to have something to write here and the same thing with this. So in here, that would be a 300 plus S is equal to 300, 300 minus O2. So you have here an S, okay? So you still have an S here. For this one, what do we can, what can we cancel? This will cancel each other. So you will have here a 300, uh, this remains. So X sub one prime, and so cancel minus X sub three prime. So this is for thickener number two, okay? Now we still have one more thickener to balance. So that would be thickener three and we will still have the calcium carbonate. We still have the caustic soda. So we'll make this far. So we'll have the Ouch. Water. Still in kilograms. Okay. So for our thickener three, this would be the last, and then we will have a system of equation to, to process. You have, okay, its feed is underflow two, its solvent is S itself, its underflow is U3 itself, and its overflow is O3. So our underflow will still have 100 for the calcium carbonate, this would still be 300, and this would be 300 X sub two prime. For the solvent, it does not have any of this because it's pure, so this is just an S. For the U3, we still have 100 here, and we have 300 X sub 3 prime for its NaOH content, and this is 300. Due to this ratio, 1 is to 3. Okay? Uh, then we do the balance here. So we have a 300 X sub two prime. We don't have here any is equal to 300 X sub three prime plus O3. So your O3, by the way, this one, we don't have any solid in the overflow. And this O3 would be 300 X sub two prime minus x sub three prime. And this one would also be an S, okay? Now, we need to use a very important information that was stated in the problem. That way we will have one given information that we can do back substitution to all the equations that we will set up later on using the principle of leaching that the concentration of the solution in the underflow will be the same concentration of the solution in the overflow. 
okay? We will not be able to reach that because it's almost time already. But I will end with the part wherein you're going to use the data stated in the problem or the information stated in the problem that after drying, after drying your uh, underflow solid will only have 1% NaOH left. All water will be, uh, of course, dried up. So the concentration of your underflow in that case would be this one. This is your underflow. The 300 X sub 3 prime divided by. So since it will not have any more the water, so it will only have the calcium carbonate, the solid, and this one. So I will have 100 plus 300 X sub 3 prime. That is based on the given that after drying, we all have, we only have 1% NaOH left. So no water is left after drying. So from here, this is by the way, X sub 3. You'll be able to solve for X sub 3 prime. Now in that case, your X sub 3 would be 0 0.00337, okay? Now we will continue this on Wednesday. We will finish this problem on Wednesday because we still have a lot of equations to process that way we can find the S. But for now, do you have any questions so far as to the solution, part of the solution that was presented? Hello, Miss. Yes. Tumakot na kami. Miss nga, ang ginisa-isa, tagid sa lamsang. Kaya hindi siya madala sa overall material balance lang ang imo S. Okay. Mm, hindi siya pwede. Nang, pwede man siya itra, it's an option that you will try tani, graphical approach. But the problem is with the graphical approach, we don't have a an equilibrium diagram to use. Because with the graphical approach, dapat may equilibrium diagram kaging nga gamiton. Kung hindi ka gusto magmano-mano, nga isa-isa hunugid balance. Asta makalabot ka sa punta. If you have read the uh, available problems, sample problems in John Kuklis and in Makave, especially in leaching, it's very limited in leaching. The only way that you can solve for, let's say, for example, the number of stages or even the solvent requirement, it's referred to as the solvent requirement or the minimum solvent requirement, is you do the graphical approach, which requires the equilibrium diagram. We don't, in all systems or in problems that will be given you, it's not an assurance that you'll be given an equilibrium diagram. And even if you will be given an equilibrium diagram, I don't think you will do the graphical approach when you solve later on. The graphical approach is just a complement that in aid of understanding of the analytical procedure. But since it's the primary tool or technique that was used by our books, the one by Jan Kupli specifically. So I cannot rely on that because you don't have anything analytical to use. So I have to resort to something which will resort, use material balance as in crude material balance step by step because you cannot solve the wash water requirement here, Josh, just by using material balance once and component balance once. You cannot based on what is provided in the problem. Okay, siya kaya. Thank you, Miss. Okay. Any question? Miss, good afternoon. Yes. Um, Mag-quiz, Miss, uh, Thursday, Miss, na, sa SEPA. Oo. Oh, oh, oh. Dala niya siya, Miss, na. Oo, oh, oh, dala niya siya kay Lichin. Hmm. Para okay. bilong na topic. Thank you, Miss. Mm -hmm. Ang inyong preparahan niya, quiz, sa Wednesday, ang kinetics lang. Para... Ang sa, ano, ang sa SEPA, sa Thursday naman. Okay. Hammer question. Nana. Sige. Actually, I have already uh, placed in YouTube the, the videos. I was just not able to share with you the links. Uh, kaya hindi ko kaarap pa sa mga inquiries today so hindi ko na-share ang links sa inyo but it will be shared to you even late tonight. 
including this one. Okay, so you can already listen to the recordings. Okay, if there aren't any more questions, uh, let's call it a day. We'll end here now, class. Uh, we'll hear each other again on Wednesday. Stop sharing now. Okay, don't go yet because I will need to check attendance again. Thank you. So see each other again on Wednesday. Bye for now, class.